What's up guys, First Hand Account here with another video. So a couple weeks ago, I actually did a presentation at the University of Minnesota. My buddy Joe, AKA Hot Cup of Joe, invited me to the U of M to basically give a talk on street photography and some street photography techniques. And so I basically made a little PowerPoint presentation talking about kind of some beginner tips on how to shoot street photography and some things that I wish I would have known when I first started shooting it. So today I'm gonna to go over all the stuff that I went over in that presentation. So the first thing that I talked about and the first thing that everybody should kind of know is the right camera settings to use to shoot street photography. If you're not shooting with the right settings, basically it can be really discouraging right in the beginning and make you think, oh, I'm not you know, I'm not good at street photography or um, I just don't have a talent for it, which is not true at all. There's just a lot of little settings that you need to change to make sure that you can be as accurate as possible and try to get the most good pictures. So in the beginning, I shot a lot of pictures with F8 as the aperture and I did that so a lot of things were in focus. I also shot with a really wide lens for street photography, which is a 28 millimeter. So I could put it on F8 and then put the focus to infinity and basically Basically just take a photo as long as people were past the maximum focal distance of the lens then everything was in focus so I would just shoot you know shoot people kind of far, further away with the 28 and then I would just crop in and post and try to make a composition that way and that was how I got a lot of a lot of good pictures in the beginning now you have to use a higher ISO when you're shooting f8 a lot of the time unless you're in really really bright sunlight it's fine honestly grain and street photography I don't think is very distracting I think that if the scene is captivating enough then if you have a little bit of grain in there it really won't matter in the end the other setting to know about is aperture priority mode so a lot of people kind of like photography traditionalists will tell you that you should never use aperture priority you should never use any of the auto functions on the camera but I completely disagree I think that the auto functions are there to help you and sometimes there are dozens of engineers that are paid millions of dollars for salaries that are diligently working to make sure that the computers inside these cameras can perform really well in all these different kinds of scenarios when it comes to the auto settings so I honestly use a lot of auto settings like aperture priority mode. I don't a lot of the time use autofocus, but uh, if you do have autofocus and it's really accurate with your camera, then I really suggest using that. The next thing I'll talk about is the technique of shooting itself. And a lot of things that um, I kind of learned as I went, I picked it up. I picked up from just experience or I picked up from, you know, other YouTubers that I saw made street photography videos and stuff like that. Um, like Eduardo Pavez, which I really, really like his work. But yeah, so the first thing is shoot from the hip. So a lot of people are scared to take photos of people and I can completely understand that. I have social anxiety myself so I'm super super anxious when I shoot street photography a lot of the time I just kind of push through it if the image is that good I just don't even think about it and I just grab it but initially I would shoot a lot of photos from the hip and that allows you to kind of get closer to people and take a photo and you can still get them in the frame as long as you're far enough away where you can still get their you know their torso and their face it's a lot less intrusive to do it that way it's a lot less abrasive i guess um, people don't notice you taking a picture as often if the shutter on your camera is really loud then you know just be wary of that and maybe use longer lenses and just be further away so they can't hear it as well yeah shooting from the hip is something that i do all the time the other thing i do all the time is shooting from shooting through windows or through glass and honestly this is one of my favorite techniques because it's almost like there's a shield between you and the person so you can take a photo through the glass and if they notice you take a photo of them and they're not too happy that you took a photo then you know there's that kind of barrier between you and them and you can kind of scurry away and they can't really get to you so I use that technique all the time and I honestly have never gotten a negative reaction shooting street photography through a window ironically that's always like when i'm just walking past somebody or you know someone sees me on the sidewalk or something like that but yeah i honestly just like still get super anxious when i shoot pictures through glass or through windows at all um, but some of my best photos are honestly 
through glass. So I really, really, really like the look of it as well. So speaking of kind of abrasive street photography, you know, just be safe when you shoot street photography as well. I wish someone would have told me that in the beginning, but kind of trust your gut feeling and don't take a picture of someone that you think might have a negative reaction to you taking a photo of them. So if you're walking past somebody or if someone's walking towards you and you want to take a photo of them, but you kind of get that feeling that they're not a dangerous person, but they're just, you know, not in the best mood, then maybe just skip that photo. It's not really worth it at that point. You know, sometimes it will be worth it and you might want to go for it, but most of the time it's really not worth the photo and uh, it's not worth all the trouble and you know the altercation that might occur and all that kind of stuff so i would just be safe when you shoot street photography and trust your gut feeling about people when you walk up to them ask people if you get really nervous if you can just take a photo of them a lot of people will actually say yes and they don't really mind and uh yeah just try to be polite to people and you know be nice and try to be safe as well <laughs> so black or black and white or color if you're shooting film then you have to choose this initially but the amazing thing about digital photography is we can choose that on the post-processing side so I honestly really wouldn't worry about black and white or color I actually shoot the Leica in a black and white mode so through my viewfinder I see everything in black and white that way I know that the exposures are good and that I'm not getting clipped highlights or clipped shadows or anything like that and the exposure comes out really nice and then I worry about the color grading and the colors later so I think colors are amazing but but they can be really distracting when you're shooting and stuff like that. Um, obviously pay attention to colors. If you see someone with a red jacket walk in front of a red wall, like obviously take that photo, but you know, just be cautious of the exposure itself initially. That's more important than the color. You can always enhance the color later or change the colors later. So I would just focus on getting a good solid exposure. That's, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, I know this was kind of a odd video and if for anybody who shoots street photography that's more experienced at it, I know this is kind of like a really novice noob, like beginner tutorial. I thought I'd put it out there anyway. I think a lot of people at the talk that I gave really wanted me to put it on YouTube and a lot of my Instagram followers wanted it on YouTube as well. So I really appreciate everybody who supports me on all the channels. And yeah, if you want to check out my Instagram, it's down below at firsthand account. If you want to check out my website, it's firsthandaccount.com. And yeah, subscribe if you want more videos like this. As always, I appreciate it and I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.